Thanks for tuning in to Witch Wednesdays with Steph for a chat about a new witchcraft topic every Wednesday morning. Welcome back to Witch Wednesdays. I'm Steph and you are listening to episode 91, Becoming a More Effective Witch. And we're going to talk a little bit today about growing your intuition and just how to practice more effective spell work in general. And I say we, because I do have a guest here with me today. So I am going to let him introduce himself and tell you a little bit about uh, his practice. So take it away. What's up guys. My name's Justin and I'm a Norse pagan um, who dabbles with witchcraft. Uh, You can find me at spaceviking0220 on Instagram. And I will definitely have that uh, link. So to make it easier for you guys, if you want to check out which I'll have his Instagram link so you can find him and ask all of your Norse pagan questions. <laughs> so what does your sort of practice entail? What does your witchcraft look like from day to day, week to week? Uh, you know, it's really different than what most people who probably listen to the podcast is. Um, I do a lot of, of herbal teas and blends with spices. I have a in a home altar set up, which is actually right next to my computer, uh, with my different deity candles, uh, my runes, tarot cards, book of shadows, along with uh, uh, actually I bought my wife a necklace a couple of months back, and I've left it on the altar to try and. Just let it charge with all the things that we have going on. Because you do have a lot going on. You are expecting twins. Yes, very soon. That is very exciting. And definitely is going to add a a lot of layers to your life. (laughs) Oh, yes. On top of the one and a half year old, so many more layers. (laughs) And so many more layers to your practice, too. Oh, yeah, most definitely. It, um with me being soon a father three that opens me up to different deities in the north norse and well even some egyptian deities that never really thought about such as thor which i believe everyone's like oh well he's a norse pagan so he automatically follows thor well not really not for me i'm actually a loki follower believe it or not oh that is, yeah. so, that is so interesting. I, I, I love the concept of Norse paganism, but I, and I mean, I, I know the different deities and obviously the difference between Thor and Loki, but um, it's not something I follow in my own practice. So this is all new information for me. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, the Norse path is l- so much like witchcraft and for what I believe Wicca is and how they have the God and the goddess. Um, so yeah, and you have an entire pantheon. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's crazy because with North paganism, there's not a lot of information, which is really something you would think as, as old as it is, you, we would have a plethora, but there's really not. So you just are figuring things out for yourself as you go. Yeah, well, I'm actually a part of the Wisdom of Odin community which he is on YouTube and he has a discord server through his uh, Patreon and uh, an Instagram. And it just comes with a whole other really cool pagans um, who honestly have helped me out a lot from time to time, figuring out my practice and everything. So how did you decide to start the Norse pagan path what led you to that in the first place well when I was a kid I fell in love with the tv show charmed and amen like like probably most of us listening do um and that was it I fell in love with it when I got in middle school I went through a huge slew of depression I found some really cool books about the Norse gods and my mom just wasn't about it. She took my books, she burned them, all kinds of crazy stuff, and put me in church. So I went down the whole Pentecostal, um, what would you call it? Religious 
path. Yeah, yeah, yeah like the the crazy people. And up until about two and a half years ago, almost three years now, uh, I've broke away from the church, and I was like, you know, I have a couple of Norse tattoos before I started. I'm like, you know what? I feel like the, this is the path I need to go down. And I started this path kind of hesitantly, just out of fear, like probably most of us who are still in the broom closet. Um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Oh, that's great that you found, were able to leave the church and find something that speaks to you and oh, yeah. pick up where you left off as a kid. That's great. It all, yeah, most definitely. it all comes back around eventually. So today specifically, we were going to talk to you. Oh, and I wanted to mention that uh, Justin is also active in our Discord community. So if you have questions for any for him, uh, anything we talk about today, you can catch him over there too. So, Oh yeah, most definitely. And I love talking to people. I brag um, in, our, in our Discord community and in the Wisdom Votings Discord community about, I have a friend who's Christian, but she is in love with the mythology of everything and kind of like wants to know all the information of like my practice and stuff. And I've made her a couple spell jars for like self-love and just to help her with confidence and some things she's got going on. So I love humble bragging about that because it makes me feel good that, you know, there are people out there who want to know and we have no right to not help them find the answers that they're trying to look for. That's really nice for you to offer because I know they are are a lot of witches who are over on the discord server and um, who listen in general who are in the broom closet and feel you know this pull between paganism and more christian religions and they're sort of making that transition and not feeling like they can have anybody to talk to so um, it's really nice that you are there and available for people to have as a friend yeah of course i mean i don't have a lot of friends who are pagan um, me and Becca, who was on a previous episode, we've kind of really become friends and she's helped me out with some stuff that I'm going through as far as like questions I have. So yes, Becca is the stitch stitching witch. And she was on the episode about how to come out of the broom closet. If that is something you choose to do. And she is also active in the discord community. So both great resources to reach out to and, you know, make a good friendship with. So. I'm glad you guys are there encouraging and, and helping people. Yeah, of course. Cause I mean, especially on the North path, it's so lonely and I lucked up and I'm in a Facebook group where a guy who lives on Fort Polk, which is where I'm from. Um, he just happens to be a Norse pagan. So we've kind of talked about linking up with some people from around the state, but even then it's really hesitant because, you know, we don't really know each other other than <laughs> through a screen. Yes, of course. And, you know, meeting people in person can be hit or miss, but that's, you know, something you risk going out and it's just nice to even be able to try. Oh yeah, definitely. And it's, and it's in, it's in the works of us trying to get together. A bunch of us just go out and have dinner. I think that's fantastic. I'm so happy for you guys. <laughs> Thank you. So getting into today's topic is all about growing intuition and also becoming more effective. And that's something that I have gotten a lot of questions about is just to like, how do I, I feel like my spells aren't working. How do I make them more effective? And also um, how to grow intuition and those kind of work together because you are sourcing sort of the same energy for both of those questions. And I think a lot of beginners, especially those who are still in the broom closet, struggle with connecting to their intuition because they have been told to ignore that. Um, it's, we all have intuition. It's part of our subconscious and we're all born with these intuitive abilities, that gut instinct, but we black them out as we age. And especially if you um, are in the broom closet and 
there are people in your life that are not accepting of your witchcraft, you are constantly being told to shove down those gut instincts and not listen to it and not practice your intuition. So it really is an important tool to hone and bring back into your practice. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I know that when I was in the church, I would always get these little hints of things that I should be doing differently than what I would. And, you know, here I am three years later realizing that, oh, hey, that's my intuition back then telling me like, I shouldn't be doing this with these people. I should be doing it with these people. Yeah, it really does try to warn you and talk to you. And we are just so used to ignoring the signs. I think that's I'm a very Western culture to just completely ignore what our gut is telling us. I, we, we are all guilty of this at some point or another. Um, oh yeah, most definitely. We went on trips where like, I felt like we shouldn't have went on and we got in a fender vendor one time and it's like, well, well, there's a, uh, there's that for you. I should have listened to my intuition. Exactly. I think we all have those little times and we just ignore that. And that happens too in your witchcraft practice and in you know your pagan belief system of sort of ignoring signs i'm sure that you've since you work with norse deities have had deities reach out to you and you didn't know or didn't recognize those signs because you were sort of ignoring them oh yeah most definitely like when i say i work with loki um and it's i say that because i thought for a long time that i would be with someone like odin or Tyr. But it turns out all the clumsiness and the chaos that's happened in my life, it was Loki right there being like, hey, buddy. Yeah, yeah and you <laughs> were just ignoring that <laughs> because you, oh, yeah. you're so focused on ignoring those signs and your own intuition, focusing on these other deities instead that you completely missed all of these signs that Loki was giving you. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, Another sign that I missed up until last year was uh, the Celtic deity, the Morrigan. And like most people, they think of the Norse's past, whenever they see ravens or crows, they think Odin. Well, at work, where I work at on post, there's crows and blackbirds around, but I will have a murder of crows sitting on the fence outside my shop door. And it happened for like three or four before I really sat down and meditated on it, trying to figure out what it or who it was. And it turned out it was the Morgan <laughs> trying to reach out. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, deities especially sort of hit us over the head with their signs. Like, I have told you seven times, how are you not getting this? But that is yeah, what we it, do. We ignore it. <laughs> and it's funny because after that, I, uh, I started having this one crow who would sit on a light pole where I would park at and it would sit there and wait for me to get out of my car and walk down the trail to get to the shop. And then in the afternoons, it would be there. But if I would leave for lunch, it wouldn't be there. <laughs> so I knew, it was a new Year's schedule. Yeah, it was, it was so crazy. And I was telling my wife about it. She was like, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> All I started doing was when I noticed that one little sign was just start saying, you know, hello, good morning, Morgan, uh, what, whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, just want a little recognition. Yeah. So if um, you are looking to grow your intuition, there are a few ways to do that. It's just a skill that you feel like you're not very good at. Uh, there are a few ways to sort of practice this and get better at it. And one fun thing that I wanted to mention, that's like, not at all, you know, proven or scientific or anything like that, but there are a bunch of videos on YouTube for this very purpose of testing your intuition where people will have a tarot card, you know, face down and you guess what it is before they flip it over or um, they're holding a crystal in their hand and you guess which one it is before they show you. 
or they have, you know, some charms laid out and you guess which one they're going to pick up before they pick it up. And videos like that are so fun for just honing your intuition because there is something in your gut that is telling you what the right answer is. And the more that you can tap into that, the better. So just practicing with those videos, I think is a really fun way to sort of get started in testing your intuition. Yeah, most definitely. Um, I like to do that at home with myself. Like I'll take my tarot deck, which I have the Robin Wood tarot deck and I'll, sh I'll shuffle and I'll lay one out and I'll sit there and I'll meditate on it and try and figure out what card it is before I flip it over. And in my book of shadows, I have a, a spot for my intuition and whenever I do this. So I'll write down what I think it is and when I flip it over, if it's something different, I'll write it down. Yeah, I think that's a great way, especially when you are writing down like why you, you thought it was going to be that card, because maybe you were thinking that, you know, it was going to be the four of cups and then it ends up, you know, being the four of something else, you got the four part, right? So why were you like so off in something in another, in what, you know, suit it was? Uh, so it can lead to some really great insights to journal it that way. I think that's really smart. Yeah, it, and it's helped me out a lot as far as uh, doing readings with that. Um, I'll do them with runes too. I'll take a bunch of them out and I'll lay them face down. And I'll do it that way. I mean, with the Elder Food Dark runes, there's only 24. So it's, a, <laughs> you only, it's not as many. Not as many as a tarot deck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great way to do it. And, you know, especially if you keep that journal practice going and look back at it, you can really see how much you grow because um, you only get better at it. The more you do it, it's like any other muscle. The more you do it and practice it, uh, the better you get at it. Oh, definitely. And that's, and that's like doing tarot or oracle readings or rune readings. I mean, the cool thing is, is like with runes, there's, there's less of them. Yeah, but we don't have nifty little books that come with runes or if you make your own like I did that tell you exactly what these mean it's up to your intuition to figure out exactly what it means right yeah and journaling that down is like the only way that you're going to be able to track and see your progress and improvements is you know day by day it's it might not seem that you're improving at all but when you check back on how you did like last month you're definitely you know making strides so yeah, definitely. And I know in my last year of uh, doing work with divination, it's helped me a lot to definitely write things down. Writing and also down, just doing it regularly. I think any sort of regular divination practice, I know it's really hard to sit down with a tarot deck like every day and do a full spread every day. That can just be really time consuming for people. Um, mm -hmm, definitely energy draining and then to to try and read that especially if you're a beginner and still looking up what all the different cards mean and how they interact with each other that can just be a lot for every day so i don't mean an everyday you know divination practice like that but just something that you do regularly maybe sitting down with them once a week or maybe doing runes because there are a, a few less significantly less than oh, yeah. um, a tarot deck then that could be you know, make it a little bit easier, but just doing something semi-regularly can really help build that intuition muscle. Yeah, definitely. Um, or even doing like a three card pool for like your day. Can yes. Help. You don't need to get into those like nine card spreads every single day. You could just, you know, pull one to three cards and see how your day ahead is. And then check back in at the end of the day and see if it matches. Yeah, definitely. Or like uh, for work, because my, I work on, uh, on military vehicles. So you never know what's going to happen from day to day. You never know like <laughs> when you go out to the field to get these vehicles, if you're going to have to dig the dig a hole to get to the to them to pull them out, or if you're going to have a really easy day, or if you're going to, you know, get there and all your tools are missing or out of order. You never know. <laughs> So, I mean, I, my wife, she crochets a lot and I got her to crochet me a little pouch for me to wear on my ne around my neck. And I'll usually put, pull a rune for the day and put a crystal for whatever I feel like I need. And 
and it's not something necessarily okay i want a rose quartz i'll go to my altar and i'll look at it i'll meditate for that second and i'll just grab one stick it in a little pouch put my necklace on and go about my day and so far i've needed exactly the crystal that i had oh that's great oh so your your intuition is really working in those instances yeah and it's crazy because I always thought that my intuition wasn't that great, but it's a lot better than what you actually think it is. Yeah, I think that's very true. A lot of people underestimate their ability or think that they don't have it at all. And we do, we all have it. It exists. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. And you mentioned the the YouTube videos where you pick the crystal that they're going to pick or figure out what it is. I love those. Those have helped me significantly at the beginning like when I first started down the path I, I looked those up and at first you know they they get discouraged because you're like oh I know it was this one but in reality it was another one yeah and I think that they're it's just like you know a fun way something that's really easy to just you can do them in a, a couple of minutes a day um to just build on it but I think from those from like when I started to when I checked them out now, I realized how much I was ignoring my initial instincts in the beginning. When I first started watching those videos, I would have a gut reaction and then not go with it because I would overthink it in like the 30 seconds it took them to flip the card over. And now I realize I'm, no, I I was doing that all wrong. I should have gone with my gut every time. So I'm a lot better at that now. Just my initial reaction is the right one. Yeah, for real. And that's helped me out a lot too with a one-year-old who doesn't really speak, but he knows what he wants. So you have to, I just kind of use my intuition for that. Like, what does he want? How can I help him? Yeah, because he so, cannot tell you and can't express it in the same way that adults can. It's very different. Yeah, and I think, you know, as far as me being a dad, that has helped a lot because, um, you know, being able to just sit down and ask him what he wants and let him fumble around with his words I can kind of pick up on that little whisper in the back of your ear that's like maybe this or maybe this yeah and I think the key for people is just listening to that I think we all you know have that reaction and we're like nope we're just gonna ignore that whether you make the conscious decision or not there's a part of you that's that chooses to ignore that little voice or that initial reaction Yes, definitely. It's definitely about ignoring <laughs> that uh, <laughs> that instinct to to shove it down and going with going with your first instinct or your gut reaction, and that is like anything else, just something that takes practice. Oh yeah, and most definitely. I think we've always been conditioned to sort of ignore that, and children have a lot of unique abilities that uh, we've lost as we age. Like children see ghosts and spirits and fae and have way more interactions because they haven't yet been told that those things don't exist or that they shouldn't interact with them Um, they just go ahead and believe the first thing that they see and so they see something and it tells them they're a ghost and they're like okay you're a ghost they just go with that and we have lost that as we age we just sort of ignore it we've been told not to to believe in that or to think that those things are real so it's about getting back those abilities yeah definitely like whenever we go get in our car uh there's some trees that are by the side of the house and that is the first place my son runs to over there he'll start pointing and he'll start talking and laughing and okay whatever Faye is over there (laughs) you really like oh that's a sweet interaction yeah just leave a little milk and honey and hope for the best (laughs) Yeah, that's sweet. See, they, they, that's nice that you are encouraging that instead of saying there's nothing there, you know, you're not actually seeing anything or. Yeah. Know. Cause that's something I dealt with like my whole life, especially with my family being all like super Christian. And it was like, no mom, I'm telling you there was something in the room. Yeah. And then they'll be like, no, oh, no, that wasn't. You're just seeing things. It's just your imagination. Yeah, I think parents are are guilty of that. I don't think pagan parents are. I think we're <laughs> no. uh, very encouraging of that. But I 
think it's important just to note that we all at one point had those experiences and had those abilities and lost them over the years, but it's something that you can get back. So don't, you know, feel discouraged if you are at the starting end of this and feeling like you get every pick a card or crystal reading wrong. Um, and you are starting very much at the beginning. At one point you did have those skills. So you're just picking them back up again. They're not yeah, lost. Definitely. And you know, my advice, if you're having that and you, if you just get every single one wrong and you never get one, right. Try grounding and then meditating for a few minutes a day. Yes, and just listening. Daily meditation in general is a great tool for growing intuition because meditating really, you really have to check in with yourself. And a lot of us are not used to doing that. Oh it's yeah. Really not daily. <laughs> and like, I fall guilty to it because I had surgery in June. So now that I'm home for the next, like, however long I recover, it takes me to recover. I got out of my rhythm and I find it oh well I can I'll meditate when I get home later or oh it's already 10 o'clock I'll do it tomorrow it really is something that's a little too easy to skip because it seems like it's at the bottom of the you know priority task list it's just not that important but um it's more important than people give it credit for oh de yeah definitely I definitely feel out of sync on the days that I don't take that minimum five minutes to just sit down and just meditate on whatever it is and it doesn't have to be something extravagant you know some mornings or some even evenings like right now it's like I'll sit down and I'm like okay what message do I need to hear today or what can I learn today I think that's a great practice and it doesn't have to be an hour long meditation slash yoga um, extravagant practice. It really can be a five minute check in. But oh, the thoughts, thing yeah, is for just, sure. You know, quieting your mind and being in the present moment. I think a lot of us don't like to do that. We don't like what comes up when we're quiet and alone with ourselves and our thoughts. Um, that can be very difficult for some people on certain days. So it, it's hard to do, but I think that it absolutely can be just a quick five minutes and is so helpful for being able to actually listen to yourself and listen to your intuition. Yeah, definitely. It, um, it helps whenever you quiet the mind. And if you can do it outside or with your feet in the dirt or for, or still in the broom closet, if you have a potted plant in your house, stick your fingers in it and just ground that way. Yeah, absolutely. I have, I have access to the outside, but sometimes I just don't even want to be out there. So I have my little potted plant for that exact <laughs> purpose. It's very grounding energy, those, the plant life. Oh yeah, definitely. We have a decent sized backyard, but we never use it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like, well, okay. And now I have to go meditate. It's been four days. And for me on the days where it's been like three or four days or sometimes a week and I don't meditate and I don't ground, that's when I really like knit myself in the butt and go out and try and just do the longer meditations. I, I agree. I try to, to something that's, a, you know, in, in between a meditation practice, I go for a really long walk with my dog every day and that's not it's sort of meditative and connecting with nature, but at the same time, I'm not solely focused on, you know, myself and my thoughts because I do have to be aware of my surroundings. I have to be aware of the dog. So there's a little bit, you know, going on there, but it is a nice way to connect with nature. But in addition to that, I also try to have at least, you know, five minutes a day where it's just me and my thoughts by myself, nothing else. Um, and I think it's an, important for me to just have that few minutes of just quiet time with my own mind. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, for some people who suffer with mental disorders, like, I mean, I know I do. So for me, sometimes it's really hard to be able to sit down and listen and let your mind just take control for a second. 
because that's when it gets that's when it's hard for me so i mean even if you're if you're like that and you need to take a break in the middle of it that's fine that's so perfectly fine i'll catch myself it yeah it's especially for beginners that can be very overwhelming and if you you know have you know not just any sort of um you know mental issues that may come up but if you're in a particularly tough situation or stage of life um that can absolutely be affecting you as well so if that oh, yeah, wraps up into your thoughts you know during your meditation it's okay to take a break from that as well yeah because we all go through that <laughs> yeah i would say any witch who's been doing this long enough any pagan will tell you that you it's okay to take a break yeah it can it, and a lot of things can come to the surface during meditations in a similar way that it can with shadow work um when you are just quiet with yourself and listening um there are things that can come up that you didn't expect it or weren't ready for so taking a break during those moments is key and just settling back down with like you know a nice cup of tea or you know you, you have all your herbal blends uh, picking a nice yeah. calmly one to settle in with it must be nice <laughs> oh yeah I mean, and it's nice, or even what I'll do is like, I'll, I'll take a moment, walk away from wherever I'm meditating at and just do something to distract me for a minute and then go back. Or, I mean, like making a cup of tea, like she said, it, it doesn't have to be an herbal blend per se. You know, you can go to Walmart or the dollar store and buy chamomile tea and stir it with intention and you're just as good as you're, you're just as good off as having a full herbal blend with all these herbs that have specific meanings for wh what have you yeah you can absolutely make it easy on yourself and sometimes even having a cup of tea like while you meditate can give your hands something to focus on and that can really like keep you in that same space and one spot and sort of draw your focus and draw your energy um, while you just concentrate on that that cup of tea and you know meditate from there. I think um, a lot of people find it helpful to just have something that they're holding on to, something that keeps their mouth busy in whatever ways you normally fidget. You know, have something that takes away those fidgeting capabilities if you're normally if you eat or if your hands are always moving if your feet are moving try some way to sort of contain those um so you can really focus the mind yeah definitely um i used to use a they sold it at earthbound called a worry stone which it's just a rock really that someone polished up and has a little indention on it and it's meant for you to so those are really I'll take a yeah i know i was really surprised how popular they were and i'd never used one and from time to time i'll i won't use those but i'll use a rune and that really helps yeah it just gives a little more focus his meditation can easily get all over the place um especially when you're first starting out a meditation practice and you're specifically trying to grow your intuition and connect with yourself, it's very easy to all of a sudden start like running through your, you know, the day's to-do list or everything that you need to get done tomorrow. Um, your mind can easily switch into productivity mode. And in those instances, it's really helpful to have something to bring the focus back. Like, okay, I'm holding on to this palm stone. Um, so that means that it's not time to think about my to-do list it's time to focus on my intuition and my meditating and be in this present moment not thinking about all of the things i have to do when i'm done yeah definitely and something else that could really help out is again grounding whenever you start or having um a specific spot um like i have a specific spot where my altar is and that's just where it is i don't move it uh unless I have to with family coming over, but usually they don't ever see it, but usually I'll sit in my chair at the altar and meditate there. And that lets my mind know, well, when I'm looking at this, 
it's meditation time. Yeah, that's a great way to focus. I think humans like to have that comfort of having something or being in the same spot over and over again. Uh, that really helps bring a comforting ap atmosphere and that can help narrow the mind and focus as well. Yeah, definitely. And also like taking the exact same steps every time you, mo you meditate. So if I sit in my chair and spin around three times and tap my forehead and I get a really nice meditation session, I'm going to do that for here for the next five or six times to see if I get the same experience. And if so, you just create that routine. Yeah, it definitely lets your brain know that, okay, it's time for this specific task and that task is meditating. Yeah. So there are a lot of, you know, different ways that you can grow your intuition and practice this um, skill. So if you have any questions about any of the things that uh, we, we talked about, or, you know, we specifically do, you can absolutely reach out over on Instagram and, and Discord and we can clear anything up. Or if you just want to get the chat going on Discord of the different ways that um, you find helpful for meditation and growing your intuition, I'm sure everybody would love to hear all of the different ideas because there's so many different ways um, to meditate and to tackle that, that sort of problem about getting more in tune with yourself. And to go along with that, I just wanted to mention a couple of things about, you know, more effective witchcraft and spell work, because that is something that's directly related uh, because growing your intuition and learning to trust yourself and that energy is really the basis of then moving into more effective spells. So I think that's really setting the groundwork, um, you know, with grounding, no pun intended. <laughs> but uh, if you really want to be more effective in spell work, you really have to be able to feel the energy and feel that intuition, even if it takes time. Everything that we have been talking about is something that, you know, we've developed over years. It is not an overnight practice. So you just have to be ready to put in the time and realize that it's not something that's going to come to you tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. And taking it one step at a time is so key. And it's like with tarot, you know, you don't go and do a 10 or 15 card spread for somebody if you've only been doing tarot for three days. You know, take the time to really understand the the basics of everything. Um, and, you know, to, that time is different for everyone. So don't compare yourself to somebody else who is really skilled in tarot and picked it up in a couple of months, whereas it's still taking you a couple of years. That's perfectly normal. Everybody has different skill sets, skill sets and, and learns at different rates. So all of this just takes time and you get better with practice. But if you're feeling, you know, that your spell work isn't as effective, then that could be a very good place to start is just doing it one step at a time, feeling the energy and feeling the intuition that you are putting forth into the spell is really the basis. So you have to grow from there. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, like she said, my practice does not, it's not going to look like anybody else's because of the way I practice. And a lot of people will recommend, oh, don't get into the wrench just yet. You don't, there's too much to know about it. Well, for me, picking up the runes was fairly easy. I picked, I, I made my first set and I carried each one around for a couple of days at a time. And I got familiar with the energy of each one. But tarot, the most I can do is a three card spread. And even then, I still have to pull the book out from time to time. I'm like, okay, what does this mean? And how does it go with this? And how do all three of these come together? Yeah, and I am totally the opposite, where I'm way more comfortable with tarot than I am with runes. So <laughs> see, even right there between the two of us, it shows how different practice is and how differently people view things and are able to pick up the different pieces. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, it could be something 
so minute as like, well, she works with Hakate, where I work with Loki and well, kind of now Thor. Something small where you get that different influence. Yeah, absolutely. You you have no idea how somebody else's practice looks you know every detail of it so like don't compare yourself or where you should be on your journey just take it one one step at a time whatever that step is that works best for you is yeah key in, in being more effective that. i fall victim to that all the time i'll see people on on here on instagram or facebook or wherever doing these super cool spells or um just anything like that like my altar is not something super pretty to look at but you look at someone like becca's becca's got a phenomenal altar like that is goals oh yeah absolutely yeah, fabulous. yeah. so i mean even then just because your altar doesn't look like that doesn't mean anything like i mean at work i don't have a full altar i have really it's just a spot on my desk that i drew out in sharpie it was like, this is my altar space. I have a candle for, well, just a white candle because white represents everything. And when I light it, I'll use whatever intention I need. And if I drink coffee, I'll pour a little bit into a bottle cap that I have in that space. And that's it. That's all I need for, that's all I have for work. Yeah, and, and that absolutely works for your practice. You don't need any more than that um if you don't want to so everyone is going to be totally different in what they like and how much of it that they like and connect with uh, so try i know the instagram is hard but try not to fall trap <laughs> to oh. the instagram pictures it is it's a that's a rough one i know yeah yeah definitely and if you're in the broom closet still go get an altoids can and I'm pretty sure Steph's mentioned that a couple of times, if I'm not mistaken. I have, yeah. Yeah, use that. I mean, when I was in school, in middle school, and I was kind of in the room closet, that's what I used. But yeah, you don't need very many stuff. You can just fit in a little tin. And, and witches who travel often use the tin just to keep a couple of quick supplies in there and carry it with them everywhere that they go. Yeah, my tattoo artist, uh, that's that's what he does because he travels from Arizona back to Louisiana. Yeah, and so it's he, so much more convenient to, to have that oh, little yeah. tin on you all the time. Oh, yeah, and it gives you that sense of security. So, I mean, you know, if you want to, you know, let's say like sigils, that's kind of what runes are like. So if you want to wear a sigil around your neck or a rune, Get a piece of paper or like a piece of wood that you can buy from a craft store, draw it on there with a Sharpie and use that. It could be something so simple. Yeah, absolutely does not need to be complicated. It can be as simple as you want and still be just as effective. Yeah, and it took me almost three years to realize that. <laughs> it's not always the way <laughs> yeah yeah you know i thought every single time i cast a spell or did a ritual i had to open a circle but it to talk to a deity now i realize it's just as simple as sitting down calling out giving a small offering i mean some days at work if i really need help i'll call out to the morgue and be like I need help. Here's a piece of the snack cake that I'm eating as an offering. So, I, and it took yeah. me a while to realize that. And it's great to incorporate all of those small things because that's just easy ways to keep working with that energy and that intuition all throughout your day uh, because you're, you don't have to sit down and create these elaborate rituals that take hours in order to be effective. Um, you can do these little small things when you have pockets of time in your day and just continue to grow that way and practice your skills. Yeah. And, you know, through me working with these different deities and honestly, meditation has helped so much. I've went from having to be on antidepressants to really not needing them. That's great. 
disclaimer, consult a medical professional if you decide to do that. <laughs> yes, but, absolutely. We always say, talk to your doctor, talk to your therapist, like never, you know, yeah, based don't, things solely on what we say on a podcast. That's crazy. Don't do that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> don't, don't be like Space, who decides he's going to cut in and out of medication. <laughs> But yes, it helps. Talk, talk to your doctor. But yeah, that it absolutely helps. That helps a lot of people, and it helps a lot of people in addition to medication. Using the two together can can be helpful as well. So, yeah, definitely. We are definitely. huge proponents here of seeking the help that you need from a medical professional. I <laughs> say that in every episode. I feel like, but <laughs> it's true. It's very true. Yeah, it is, and uh, and I mean, especially like with me being a veteran. Some days it's really bad and some days it's not so bad. It's, just, it's whatever. But on the days it's really bad are those days that, you know, I have a support system who can help. And, you know, the Discord channel has been phenomenal with helping me keep my mind off of things. Uh, yeah, it's great to have that community in addition to a meditation practice. Just incorporating yeah. both both together yeah there are a lot of you know moving parts to you know mental health and how that fits in with your pagan practice and making those things you know meld together in a healthy way yeah for sure and just to bring up a few little points about you know effective witchcraft we kind of touched on this already but in the same with intuition when you are working on spells just anticipate interference before you start and we talked about this with meditation if you need to walk away in the middle of it you know that's okay anticipate that strange you know feelings might come up something that you didn't imagine and the same it works for you know your spell craft um it's easy to anticipate what might come up or why it might not work. So if you're finding that your spells aren't working, um, do some back digging to figure out why. And again, that's where that intuition comes in. Um, that if you meditate and get better in touch with that intuition, you can more easily anticipate uh, any interference that's going to come up when you start doing spell work. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like we said before or earlier, I have a one-year-old. And I, don't know if y'all can, yeah, I don't know if y'all can hear him or not, but I can hear him through my headset going, da da, da da. <laughs> so, even with meditating, meditation, it's hard to find that space where you're not having that little poke in the side of the face, like, hey, I need something. <laughs> yes. You, I mean, just by casting more spells, which is, you know, uh, also a tip on this list to be more effective is to just keep practicing at it a along with, you know, growing your intuition, spell work in general, just keep, keep casting spells and, and just, you know, see how that works. But the more that you do it, the more you're going to be able to anticipate what's going to interfere. And that could absolutely be your child or your dog, any sort of physical interference. And if you develop a more regular meditation practice, you'll also be able to figure out um, what sort of energetic or emotional interferences might come up during your spell work. Like if you are going to do a love spell or a friendship spell, for example, if you don't love yourself first, that's going to interfere with that spell. And the way that you know that you don't love yourself is through meditation and, you know, a intuition practice like that and getting to know yourself. And those feelings can be very uncomfortable when you first come across them. Um, but that's the only way to grow and learn in that area. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, also if you have an issue just sitting down meditating by yourself, go to YouTube. Yes. Guided meditations yeah. are so nice to like have that a is, place there. That is what has, what helped me so much at the beginning really was doing the guided meditations for whatever you have going on. I mean, I still, I learned something new today with in the North Path, Norse Path, and it's your field goat, which is basically your spirit animal or your totem animal. And, and now I have to go and try and figure out what mine is because, you know, I want to know. Yeah, yeah, that's super interesting. 
Yeah. And who doesn't want to know? <laughs> right. And for people who are like, oh, well, you can't say spirit animal because that's exclusive to Native Americans. And the research I've done with this, they're the same thing, different names. Yeah, it, it is. Spirit animals is um, a Native American term. However, there are other religions that use that same terminology. So Native yeah. Americans are not the only ones who use the phrase spirit animal. Um, I think the problem with that comes in when somebody is like, Beyonce is my spirit animal. That's a little like, no, no, that's not how that term is used. That's yeah. the, the wrong way to bring about that in, in conversation, but using it in terms of your pagan head, like, yeah, um, Norse paganism is another one that does use spirit animal. So use, it's okay to use that term um, if that is how it comes up in your pagan path. Um, yeah, that one is not closed religion. Just yeah, wanted to throw definitely. it out there for everyone. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And if someone says it is, send them my way because you know it's not. It's not a close practice. Yes. Trying to find it because I remember being like ten years old, trying to figure out what mine is. And I'm 25, almost 26, and I think I know what mine is. It's fun too meditate that meditate on that and try to figure that out i know what mine is <laughs> i've always been very clear on that one mine's a raccoon and there is no there is no ifs ands or buts about it it always has fun <laughs> so. that is so funny you said that because i just got a tattoo of a raccoon riding a bicycle oh with, i love it i love it so much with, with training wheels that says sir this is a burger king drive through <laughs> oh, oh i love everything about that oh my gosh raccoons are my favorite yeah so we, I believe mine is a fox, my spirit animal is a fox, but, oh, and that's, that too. yeah, well, and it's just because since I was a kid, foxes were a huge part of my life, and I had a stuffed fox that disappeared one day, and now that we have Jack, he's got two stuffed foxes, some blankets, onesies, all kinds of stuff, and it's like, it comes oh, back around. It really yeah. does. It, once again, it comes back around. It, that, yeah, that's so interesting to see how that works. Intuition at play, and you don't even know it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, you know, something else that I've learned with figuring out spirit animals and totems, you can have more than one. You, you can have one for your family. You can have one for yourself, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. Oh, that's another super interesting point. If you want to chat with Justin Moore on Discord about uh, this path and and finding you know your own you know totem spirit guide in the animal world, then definitely you know reach out to him and ask any of the questions that you have about how to start doing that because I think that's a really interesting practice. And I think a lot of people, a lot of witches, connect with animals. And like the spirit of animals, it's something that we're all like very familiar with and really just enjoy. So I think that's one that a lot of witches are going to want to know. Oh, yeah, definitely. Out. Definitely. And, you know, if I don't know the answer, I have one whole other Discord server pulled up on my screen that is all North Pagans and who will, who will be more than glad to help and if i don't know the answer i can definitely find it which is what's so great about the community you guys are so willing to help each other so if you have not joined the discord yet then absolutely reach out you can email me at which wednesdays at gmail.com and i will send it to you but it's always linked through instagram i think it's like the fifth link down in my profile and um, instagram is which wednesdays podcast so it's linked all over the place and it's free to join. So, and you can, you know, make up your own username and join completely anonymously. So enjoy and, and chat. You have a whole support system ready for you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And that's one of the things that I absolutely love about Discord is how if you want, you can be anonymous or, you know, you can be who you want to be. And, you know, if you have things stopping you from asking questions or reaching out, trying to find the information you need this is a really good place because i mean 
there's Discord servers for everything. I have a server that I created just for me and my buddies who play Overwatch. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so. Yeah, it's, it's a great place to gather. Yeah. Yes, if you have any Justin's active over there all the time. If you have any questions, we will both be on today as this episode goes live. Um, and again, I will link everything so you are able to find him and ask all of your questions. But I think uh, that covers everything. This is like an hour later, I think. I, yeah, when we got on this, I told Justin, I was like, no, it's going to be like half hour, 45 minutes, won't take up too much of your time. I lie. Every time I lie, I don't mean to, but I'm sorry. That was everything on my list about growing intuition and just becoming a more effective witch by getting in tune with that part of yourself. Justin, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Or did we yeah, no, I definitely love talking to people about this because it's, my, my wife isn't a pagan. She's one of those people who's like, eh, there's something there. I don't know what it is. I'll find out later, I guess, but. Agnostic, love it. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I love talking to people. It's just <laughs> my thing. I, I've been like this since I was a kid. I will never meet a stranger. <laughs> I, I, I just don't. I, I've never met a stranger. And I don't know if that's just who I am, who I was in a past life or what. Um, but definitely, I'm so open and willing to answer any questions you have. Um, and again, if I don't have the answer, I have the resources to, to get it and if you just need a friend yeah and if you just need someone to talk to a friend you know yeah I know it can be incredibly hard to find community and places are going back into versions of lockdowns and mass mandates and all those things coming back so I know that is triggering for a lot of people for a lot of anxiety and stress and feeling very isolated so you have a built-in friend in Justin to get on and, and talk to. So that's really nice to have that available and not feel so alone. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, I was the kid growing up who never had really, I had people around, but I could never call anyone friend. So I have basically spent my whole adult life striving to be that person, to be there for someone who, who was like me. And part of the reason why I have this, so stupid i'm looking at it right now on the discord where i post where i shared it the stupid tattoo it makes me laugh and i had a little girl the night that i got it look at it fall on the floor and die laughing <laughs> it's so stupid it's so funny and you know i tell everyone i meet if i can make one person laugh that's all that matters i love that attitude in people i think you're wonderful <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to be some days it's not so nice, but <laughs> oh, we all have those days. Yeah, yes, definitely. if you need community and a friend, definitely hop over there. And Justin is active on Instagram too. So I will link all of that. So get in there and chat and let us know what your meditation practice looks like and how you have grown your intuition over the years. If you have any helpful um, YouTube videos to share, definitely link those over on discord. I know everybody's always looking for great guided meditations. That's a question that comes up in discord a lot. Um, cause guided meditations are really are so helpful and popular. So if you have any of those to share, then definitely head over and join the chat. I feel like today is going to be a very chatty day in the server after this, <laughs> this goes live. So right, yes. we will be there and <laughs> we will see you there. Yeah, definitely. Um, I listen to quite a few podcasts all the time never ending so if i find someone who has a really good guide at meditation which i'm looking right now actually um <laughs> yeah we're I will, lots to share with you yeah i will definitely link that um another good podcast is uh feast of torches super super cool guy his name is azazel his name is also justin um he has some really cool guided meditations and another really good place for information for beginners is Seeking Witchcraft. Yes, that, that's a great one. I'm familiar yeah. with that one. Yeah, I love Ashley. She's so sweet. Great, great places to check out. So I will try to link everything that we've talked about at witchwednesdays.com to 
make it easier yeah. for you guys. <laughs> yeah, and if y'all want to know more about like the Norse paganism, uh, you have the Folk Podcast, which is uh, from my buddy Jacob, who runs the Wisdom of Odin. And there's four other co-hosts, three or four, and they have guests just like I am pop in all the time. Oh, that's yeah, that's a great resource. I have had a lot of questions about Norse paganism. So for those of you that be, have been asking, there you go. There's your answer. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And then two of the co-hosts, Keenan and Blade, they branched off and they have their their own podcast called Grandma and the Dwarf. That's a great name. Yeah, well, uh Keenan, if you see him, you understand why we call him the dwarf. And <laughs> <laughs> and grandma. Well, Blade goes by Babushka, which is Russian for grandma. So that's how he got that name. And <laughs> all that. that's all that's discussed throughout the podcast. But yeah, I've never of... been happier in a community than I am now. That's awesome to hear. I love that. So we're definitely going to link all of those things for you guys to find because I've gotten lots of questions on these various things. So I'm going to try to link everything that we talked about to make it a little easier for you. Again, witchwednesdays.com that you can find the whole list. And that is, I think, everything we had to share with you today uh, for this episode. So thanks, Justin, for being here. And I know we will be uh, chatting more over on the server and on Instagram. Thanks, Steph, for having me. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and an hour flew by and it didn't even feel like it. <laughs> Hopefully it feels that way for you listeners too. And that is all I have for you this week. I will see you next week. Later guys. Need even more witchcraft? Subscribe to Patreon for exclusive bonus content three times a week and order Sabbath boxes and other supplies at witchwednesdays.com. Be sure to follow on Instagram at witchwednesdays podcast. Thank you.